Hello guys and welcome to a new Warner video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 versus 10 on rocks and I'm going to be playing with the 2nd UK Infantry Division. This is the destruction version of rocks that we're going to be playing on today which does indeed mean we are playing on destruction mode. If you are unfamiliar with how destruction mode works it's basically based on kills. Whoever gets the most kills first wins. And in this case, we have to get 40,000 points worth of kills in order to win the game. If the timer runs out, then it's whoever's got the most points. Simple as that. Now, the sectors in Destruction, the way they work is they give you extra income. So say if we hold golf entirely, we get four extra points or income every three seconds, I believe it is. And same with Foxtrot Hotel, everything's worth four in this particular map. If it's contested, neither side gets the income bonus. So you have to capture the entire thing in order to get that bonus. But as you can see, the game is off. And I'm going to be going with the classic second UK start of the Amabil. Flying over the mountains here, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous as they swing overhead zooming over on the right hand side of this map and this is one thing that I really like about the destruction version of rocks is it actually gives you a sector on the right hand side of this map which means that it's a lot more valuable to control than it is in a normal conquest version of the map and so today my plan is to try and control the mountains here with the second UK so first of all, coming in with the Harrier GR3s, they're going to be pushing their way towards these helicopters. We're looking for the KA-50 Akula AT. This thing is worth a lot of points, 260 points. We're going to be leaving it there on one health. Unfortunate not to pick that off just yet. But I have managed to get my airdrop into position. The Lynx is going to be returning to base. And my ammo belt getting back into position. Harrier GR3 comes over, finishes off the KA-50 Akula. Getting hit pretty hard by AA though and will go down. That's because there's a spawn right there. So the AA going to be able to get the better of us. Rocket artillery firing away on the backside here. The M270 MLRS hiding in the trees. Blasting away with those 227 mils. Smashing that road where the enemy forces are coming in, leaving some pretty big craters, to be honest. But all the while, they're going to be spreading out the Emmerville here with the plan that if they don't kind of try and push into this tree line, that I can move to the left here into Echo and potentially cut off reinforcements or just try and be a pain on the back side there. So next thing I'm going to be doing is bringing in some more troops and well what I opted to do since the Javelin LMLs and the Jäger Aufklader here can't be brought in uh, with helicopters themselves I sold half my lynxes, kept the other well kept four of them and now I'm going to be using those to take these guys to the front line and that way I don't have to use the road which goes all the way around here. I can just fly straight over the mountains, get myself some man pad support for these Amabil because currently these are extremely vulnerable to helicopters, attack helicopters in particular. That's why it was so important that I took down the MI-8 and the Akuda at the start because if those were both still alive and they ended up coming across my Amabil, then I'd be in a really bad spot. And honestly, one of the best counters to heli airdrops at the start of the game is attack helicopters because usually you can't heli drop AA so there's not really much to stop your the helicopters from demolishing your infantry of course I could invest in like air, air superiority in order to get the job done but that's easily countered when you're so close to the enemy spawn anyway you can see that another player is also going for a little bit of a cheeky move here Mushroom Surprise, the persons whose 
A cooler I shot down has opted to go for the BMD2s on the right hand side here. So my Harrier GR3 going in for the strafing run to try and take them out. We've got helicopters flying overhead. And that's going to allow my airmobile to shoot that down. The MI-26 manages to get away with it just because it's so tanky. This thing has so much health. I did unfortunately use, lose my Al Jaeger Alfkada. One of the Lynx AH Mark 1s got shot down. But at least my three Javelin LMLs got into position, which means I am going to be able to deal with attack helicopters in future. We're coming across the Harrier GR3, able to finish off the MI-26, and so far these GR3s have been doing a fantastic job in this engagement, getting me plenty of kills so far. You can see that we're up to 750 kills already in the first five minutes, which is not too shabby now these lynx AH mark ones are going to be heading back to base to be sold and along the way we'll see the desan niki that have been unloaded by the bmds now i have my rover cp here that's going to be trying to contest this sector it is important that we contest it sooner than later because india is giving them an extra four points of income per three seconds at the moment so we want to try and avoid that as much as possible but I am felt they have found the Desaniki Kamboti that was capturing this so I'm hoping that we're able to clean that out meanwhile we're continuing to spread the air mobile but I still need to be careful of these attack helicopters coming in this time the MI-8 MT coming up with the MI-24K and both of those very very nasty for my infantry the lml has managed to get into a position at least to engage the mi-24k so i'm hoping to at least be able to shoot that down more reinforcements are coming over the sapati rpo to save the leader here and just about managed to do so in time emma bell still trying to run for their lives and the Emmerville in this case at close range might actually be able to kill these guys off but since they're all routing they don't really have the accuracy to do so the more healthy squads might be able to help out but the javelin LML back in position here does manage to finish off the MI-24K and back comes the Harrier GR3 for the strafing run onto the MI-8T able to take that out another MI-8T on the way though and the tour has now arrived on the right hand side MiG-23 MLD shoots down Maharia Rocket Artillery now coming in to support and the Rocket Artillery does finish off the leader in the corner of the sector but doesn't really hit that infantry all too well enemy artillery now smashing into the tree line here so I'm going to be spreading my airmobile as quickly as possible and any units that are getting low on numbers are going to be retreating to the supply chinook that I managed to hide in the corner here so far. Now with the enemy leader dying and my rover CP getting into the sector we have managed to capture this for ourselves. I've also opted to bring up a bunch of Jaegers on this right hand side that are going to be making the trek all the way to our forward deployed units cleaning out all the bmd2s and desan niki on the right hand side along the way i also have this gazelle that's hanging out on the right hand side here to keep an eye on enemy infantry that might be still hanging about you can see i'm also now bringing up the sas and they are going to be working their way forwards in their saxons so it's going to be a little bit of a track, that's for sure, <laughs> for these Yankees. Uh, especially since they're going to be engaging a lot of infantry along the way. But so far, so good, I would say. We're now up to 1,295 points worth of kills on this right-hand side. And yeah, I just really enjoy playing over this part of the map, which, again, isn't something that you would quite often do in the conquest game mode the other thing that's really nice about destruction is it doesn't really matter so much 
how the positioning of troops is. Unless, like, you're actually on their spawn and kind of camping their spawn or something. You can have these big bulges in the front line. This is like a huge salient in the middle. But you can see that the enemy team has done pretty well on the left-hand side. So they've managed to push back our forces here. And in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter because it's all about kills and losses. So whilst position does kind of matter uh, in terms of putting yourself in a good position to get kills, like especially when it comes to uh, like terrain, the actual sectors don't matter as much, um, which is really cool. And I think it creates a lot more uh, a difference in dynamics. I, do, I still prefer the Conquest game mode overall. I think it's uh, a lot more of a balanced game mode. But I think Destruction is fun to play once in a while. And I think it actually uh, is much better for 10v10s because it allows people who maybe are a little bit newer to the game uh, to not be punished so hard. And the games don't end so fast if one team is much better than the other, for example. So you've got a bit more time to like mess around with units, maybe make a bit of a comeback in terms of kills and losses, especially if your opponent like overextends across the map. Um, it, all it takes is like somebody over investing in a couple of eagles and suiciding them into your AA to get like 800 points. So <laughs> it's uh, sometimes quite easy to make a little bit of a comeback. Anyway, the Chinook was getting fired on by artillery, so I've had to move it behind at this tree line, probably because it was being spotted from the left hand side here. But the Aegis still advancing. Emmerville falling back from the incoming artillery. LMLs still spreading out on this left hand side. Going to be looking for the kill onto the MI2. Nice thing about Javelin LMLs is they have like three missiles that they fire before they have to reload. So it does make them pretty good. Emma Belt getting hit pretty hard. Fortunately by a grad that didn't have many rockets left. It might have also been a grad from one of the 35th players because the 35th guards, they have a grad that only has 20 rockets as opposed to the full 40. But one of my SAS did get picked off by a Desaniki BMD that managed to sneak up into this area. Unfortunately for me, you see that I have transferred one of my SAS into a Lynx, so I'm moving that forwards to help us out sooner than later because the SAS, they do have stingers, so able to also act as AA for my Allen Bell. There's a lot of troops coming in here. Bunch of Spetsnaz OP. Not the most scary forces for us. To deal with. My ammo belt should be able to clean them up at range. I mean, even at close range, just due to sheer numbers, my ammo belt should win out. But uh, SAS here, again, this one going to be looking to get in a Lynx. Just makes it so much faster. Going over the mountain with the Lynx AH1. Pick up the SAS, transport them forwards again. It's just really, really fun to sort of micro this and play around the Brits taking control of this forest. And the Jaeger contingent of the Germans now joining us on the front lines. They've almost made it. Also alongside the M13, so we will have the MG3s that those provide as fire support. Emma Belt firing away from their elevated positions onto the Spetsnaz OP. Because these do use AKS U74s, if they outnumber me, say if there's like three or four squads versus one Emma Belt, the three or four squads will win, so there is that to worry about. Also with the MI-24B providing rocket fire support, it's not going to be great. Now the SAS here, getting picked on by a couple of Zapati RPO and the Modestraki Metis. So what I'm going to do is move up the Saxons and the M113s, because none of these troops can deal with these armoured units at close range. The Metis ATGM excuse me, has a minimum range of 300 metres, so can't 
arm itself in time in order to take out these armored vehicles. And that way we can just run them down with machine guns and there's absolutely nothing they can do about it. Meanwhile, trying to get the Javelin LMLs back to the Chinook Supply in order to get them more missiles because this position has been fantastic so far for taking pot shots at enemy aircraft as they fly over. And since there's like an air spawn right here, it's quite common that aircraft are going to be flying over this side of the map and we're able to get good hits in. The other thing that's been good for these Javelin LMLs is shooting down these helicopters and without the LMLs transported to the front in the helicopters at the start of the game, I would be in a terrible position right now. So that worked out really well and it was a really, really good play. And we've got another player bringing up some aero rifles in the Blackhawks. Look at that. Very cool. Dropping in there. And unloading those infantry. As more rockets smash the mountain. Gotta be a bit careful of my javelin LML. It can't really defend itself. The Jaegers here arriving at the front line just to get absolutely blitzed by the K-50 Akula and the Mi-24 AA. Now more ammo belt arriving from my troops. And we got the SAS trying to move up here to provide some AA. A couple of MiG-29s flying overhead looking for the kills onto the Lynx AH Mark 1s as they land, but the Chinook getting hit again by artillery and forced to move, but the double F-15 Eagle. Wonderful stuff. Although one of them there going down. Well, that was cinematic, wasn't it? Poor chap. We'll take it out on the way out. Now the Fighting Falcons looking for the kills onto these helicopters. One of the F-16s did go down. A second goes down on its way out. And I would say that wouldn't be so much of a bad trade in Conquest game mode, but in Destruction game mode, he actually lost more than he killed worth of points, which is obviously not good in the grand scheme of things. So things pretty close on the kills and losses, as you can see. Like, yes, our positioning's much better in the center of the map, but we're on 14,075 kills. They are on 13,855 kills. So really all to play for as we continue in this game and yeah, I'm just trying to get my guys back into a good position here on this right hand side constantly having to move around though to dodge this artillery react to the enemy helicopters and yeah I'm still bringing up more and more reinforcements this link's H1 finally arriving I've got the Bedfords slowly working their way through the mountains in order to drop off more Javelin LMLs on the front. We have just constant artillery going to be smashing into my infantry. And you can see that basically none of my forces at this point are full strength anymore. So I'm going to be having to move them back to the Chinook Supply. I have already started to bring up a second Chinook Supply because this first one's certainly not going to have enough supply left in order to fix up all of these squads. I've got to be so careful about this rocket artillery that consistently comes in. And the Emmerville, actually really, really awesome because they do have the Law 80. And this Law 80 does have 20 penetration at 750 meter range with 60% accuracy, which is really, really nice. So, very, very good. And this is a big old stack of units. Tor, double strata, triple strata actually. And here comes enemy artillery. Oh, sorry. Friendly artillery. <laughs> and be landing right on top of that beautiful target. All the M109s. Smashing those units to pieces. And finally, we're getting some sort of semblance of a front line sorted. Originally it was just my ammo bill running up and down like headless chickens, but now I'm able to set up a line of infantry in the front with a line of AA 
and special forces behind. And you can see I've got the more the, those javelin LMLs that I should be unloading and moving forwards. But obviously I'm microing so much stuff, paying attention to so much going on here the whole time. F-16 trying to come in there, land a seed missile onto the tour. But the AT F-16's coming over. And absolutely slapping the troops here. Managed to kill the Strellas. The tour's still alive, but... Doing a good job with those AT planes. TATBB also getting popped. So, lovely stuff. I've also now invested into my own artillery. These are the really big M107 175mm artillery pieces. My counter battery absolutely smashed into the grads here. You can see that it was the 35th guards grads that were firing at us. So we managed to get some good damage in there. These grads starting to move forwards because the chap who was controlling them unfortunately surrendered. They're going right into line of sight of our troops. Now we've got IMAX coming in <laughs> with the Apaches to support us here. Also the A-10 Thunderbolt coming over. A little bit risky, but does manage to take out the tour early on. Also going for the Strella there. So I won't have much to fire back at us. I'm also going to be putting my artillery on that Strella to get rid of it for future airstrikes. MiG-29 comes overhead, gets taken out very quickly by the man pads. And I'm also able to clean up a unit on the left hand side there. So now we're really starting to get the lead. We're up almost 2,000 points on our opponents. And I've got 2,785 points worth of kills so far. Davis doing a good job with those F-16s and has got himself up to 3,250 points so loads of kills on this right hand side to be had as the opposing forces continue to try and tackle the swarms of infantry that are taking control of this mountain forest. A T-80 coming in there is going to be a bad time for the Amabil especially since they are getting hit by the AA there as well. Rocket artillery coming in once again. This time going for the position where my M107s were. A bit of counter battery coming through. But able to take care of both the Tunguska and the T80 there with the Amabil's Law 80. Beautiful stuff. The other thing that I fa failed to mention is that the Law 80 does have the 20, well, 20 round per minute rate of fire, which does get increased with veneracy. So um, very, very fast rate of fire allows you to get all four of those shots off in quick succession. SAS with the Stinger able to engage the MI-24V here. Still have to be careful because under the rocket fire there, they will go down pretty quickly, but able to take out the MI-24V before it does too much damage. A lot of artillery landing on that one unit there. MLRS coming in. My own artillery coming in. Not too bad. And one thing that you can do in destruction, obviously in this position, the main reason we're getting a lot of kills is because they keep trying to push us out of here. But as the enemy, technically what they could do is just let us have this position and then focus all of their stuff elsewhere in order to find more kills. Because at the moment, with my troops all dug in here, it's very difficult for them to dislodge. They're trying to use artillery, but it's not hitting very accurately because they're not able to get recon on my troops very easily. Like the best way to get recon on my forces would be to have a helicopter um, kind of fly over and discover the positions of my infantry. But the helicopters can't get close because of the man pads. So they'd have to use ground-based recon, 
but the ground-based recon's not going to be able to see deep into the forest, so then the artillery is basically fire firing blind the whole time. The MiG-23 MLD there, <laughs> certainly playing with fire, trying to take out the AH-64 Apache. Almost managed to do so, but the Javelin's killing the MiG-23 on the way out. So yeah, go back to my point. Basically, they could just ignore my position here and set up their own defense in this tree line so that I can't move forwards towards their spawn. That would be a very good solution to make sure that I, I'm not really getting value out of this good position here. But instead, we were getting fed quite a lot of points, especially with the helicopters getting shot down by the javelins. I guess the other problem with me being here for them is that it does close their airspace a lot on this side of the map. But Emmerville now coming through. Gonna be finding a bunch of troops that have all bunched up on this side. This is AI, I believe. So that's why they're all reacting like this. But the Strike Eagle, <laughs> no chill, coming in with the LGB right on top of all those reserve infantry. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, BMD-2 is trying to make an attack here, but the Apaches with those Hellfires and rockets absolutely mincing those armored personnel carriers. Zesaniki, they're going to be moving back to the side because my SAS here have been causing a little bit of problems for them in the back side. Now, these SAS have only got a couple of AT4s remaining. Uh, this Emma built down to its last shot. So have been causing a bit of a nuisance on the back side. F-16s managing to get away with that one as Davis secures himself some more kills. Now with all of this infantry running around it's time to bring in the Jaguars. And here they come. Lovely kills for the Jaguars. And no AA to be seen. Which is working out very nicely for us. As I'm able to just get these free airstrikes in. A lot of the AI or the uh, AA that was on the right hand side initially has now been taken care of. And so we're just kind of focusing on cleaning up the troops on the left hand side so that we can continue to move up this tree line and get ourselves into a better position here. The Emmerville, these guys, they should be falling back. I should have had them falling back already because they've run out of Law 80. Uh, missile or rockets going to be saved by the F-16 briefly but the BRM going to be trying to finish off my Emma built on the way out F-16 such a beautiful aircraft coming back around for another go potentially SAS trying to run over here and get the AT-4 on target, but just not in time to save the Emberville. Uh, you can also see that I did manage to get a Challenger 2 all the way to the front line here. That drove all the way over these mountains, I believe, in order to get here. So, there we go. to be some RD Evan. To be honest, as I mentioned, it's kind of difficult for the uh, for the enemy to accurately target our troops. Also, the artillery can't hit the Apaches, so that's not a big target for them. But uh, IMAX here, certainly backing up my AA. Also, Dave is also bringing in his own stingers. <laughs> We've got a line of stingers here behind the line of Javelin, LMLs, and SAS. <laughs> it's just a big old wall of AA. Meanwhile, elsewhere on the map, things still 
kind of held back here on the left hand side for our team but you can see that my team has just set up defensively and that's somewhat the right thing to do you know allow just let them push in and then ambush them and that way you can get lots of juicy kills onto those t80s and that's what this game mode is all about it's just finding efficient ways to get kills challenger 2 is sneaking up a little bit here to try and get some shots onto any enemy forces to come out of this tree line. Meanwhile, all my Amabel and Jaeg Alfkara uh, sort of slowly swinging over to the left hand side. I've also got a Lynx A7 Hell Arm. It's going to be potentially looking to get some HHMs on target in future. But here comes another couple of helicopters. And basically what's happening here is the enemy team, they are seeing like, oh, our teammates need help on this side. So I'm going to bring in a bunch of helicopters. But what they don't know is like their team hasn't told them that there's loads of AA here. So it just basically ends up being a kill zone for all of these MI24s. As soon as they get too close, the man pads open up and absolutely blitz them. Now in this case, a couple bad losses for me. I lost the Lynx A87 Hell Arm to the ZU-23 and I also did lose the Challenger Mark II there to the MI-24V with the COCOM missiles, so not ideal. Still doing well, controlling this left-hand side. The Lynx A87's managed to pull back into a position where it can engage the BMD2s without being shot at. The Apache is also coming over here. This one Apache getting a little bit too close for comfort. Does end up getting taken down by the Afghanski. A Spetsnaz, that's another unit that I want to see at all. I'm going to have to try and overwhelm that as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Spetsnaz against Emmerbilt is a real bad time. There's something they could certainly take great advantage of in good numbers. Something that I'm actually surprised we didn't see sooner, especially since both of the 35th Guards players were focusing us with the Grads for the majority of the game. Like, get, get some Spetsnaz in here, things would have been absolutely gross. Just like unload them into the end of the trees here and then slowly run them through. Could have very easily taken care of a lot of our infantry that way. But we are still managing to get some great hits in here. I took out another expensive tank with my AT. We take out the Desan Niki and the BMD2s. That's all adding up for points as well as we move up to 5,255 points worth of kills. On the left side, again, just let the enemy move forwards into your ambushes. Milan 2 taking out Taco's T80s as he overextends on the left hand side. A massive group of Desan Niki BMT there. Not going to be a fun time for the Jaeger, that's for sure. Managed to get the Lynx 87 rearmed. That thing taken out so many enemy troops so far. Just trying to sort of put it forwards enough that it can engage the Afghanski here. Since it's got so many kills, it is now three veterancy. And able to use that sweet 75% accuracy. Get some nice kills. Big bombing strike coming in from the F111E. Oh yeah. Allowing time for the egg alpha color to finish off the Dasan Niki Metis. M1A1A cab actually. On the left hand side here from Davis engaging the BMD2s as they come up. Now the Desan Niki BMD moving across. They're going to end up bumping into my Javelin LMLs. 
it's best as Camlotti moving up, but the Apache is now arriving to help support. So all of these Desaniki coming over the ridge here to help against the Jaeger Alpha, but as soon as they are revealing themselves, all of the 30 mils of the Apaches opening up and doing so much damage. Got two more Lynx AH7s arriving. Unfortunately, one of them is going to get popped there by the Desanigla. Not much they can do to stop that. And with the rest of the infantry still hanging around on this left-hand side, I'm looking to get some bombing strikes in with the Harrier G... Or the Jaguar, sorry. GR1s. No kills this time around. Sad times. But the Jaeger's going to be finishing off the Desaniki there. So, all the while, whilst this battle has been going on, I've been bringing back units that are getting low to resupply them and then send them back to the front line. And it's really important, especially in destruction, that you do this because every loss is points for the enemy. And so, unit preservation is even more important in this game mode than it is in Conquest. And like even in Conquest, it's, it's, it's important, right? Um, but in this game mode, because kills directly relate to points, it's even more so. Foxes have now arrived. And foxes, they're going to be useful for dealing with enemy troops at range. If it's not like Dasaniki Metis at least. When it comes to like the BMD2s and the Dasaniki that they're bringing in, particularly things like this big old blob of Saperi RPO, Foxes are fantastic for just wiping them out very quickly with their Radins. So that's what I'm hoping to do on the right hand side here. But the Chinooks here being all used up. That's my teammate also landing to get resupplied. So the Chinooks now going to be heading back to base at the field supply point. Now what you can do, as you can see, I've queued an order here with the Chinook. So... What I'm doing is right-clicking the field supply point. The Chinook will fly back, land, and then if you hold shift and right-click back where you want to go, um, it will fill up and then leave. So you can see the Chinook currently has a move order onto this field supply point. As soon as it's finished with that order, it will automatically fly back to the front line, which is really, really handy to know. You can also do it with trucks, but I'd recommend doing a fast move order next to the supply point then right then holding shift right clicking the field supply point then holding shift and pressing another fast move back to the front line that might sound a little complicated but basically you're just queuing a fast move order to the fob because if you do a fast move order on the fob it doesn't automatically resupply it has to be a right click on the fob in order for it to work properly so Apaches still demolishing stuff on the right-hand side. We're getting very close to the score limit with 39,700, 800, 900. And there will be victory very, very shortly as the foxes start to demolish more infantry on the right-hand side here. Something goes down to my airmobile further up. And that is going to be victory. Oh, I just realized at the end there the Chinook didn't automatically take off. That's probably because in this case I'd actually forgotten to uh, give it the shift order to move back to the front line. But uh, it does work, trust me. <laughs> 6,065 kills, 2,160 losses. Really, really fun destruction game using the second UK. Uh, running around in that tree line. Really, really good fun. Really, really good fun. And uh, some of my units got some incredible value. The Emma Bill here getting a Strella, an MI8, and an Afghanski, of all things. Uh, Jaegers actually dealing with the Dersan Niki on the right-hand side, sweeping through and cleaning out that flanking attack. Emma Bill doing well against the Spessner's OP. SAS helping out a lot, especially even with the uh, AA. MI24V MiG-29 kills for the SAS. Uh, my M107 counter battery. Was good enough to pick off one of the grads. Unfortunately, after that, my counter battery kind of fell a bit flat because 
they started actually moving the grads a lot more. Uh, so I probably should have just used the M107s for attacking units on the front line. But another SAS doing fantastically well, killing off the MI8T, MiG-29, BRM-1, MI-24, KDA Schutzen, Desant-122 mil on the back line. Very, very nice indeed. Another Amabel with Tunguska, T-80, BV kill, and a Spetsnaz kill. Now, like I said, Spetsnaz would have been a very, very th hard thing for me to deal with, especially at the beginning of the game. So I'm lucky I didn't bump into more of those because that could have absolutely cleaned out that tree line. But alas, it did not happen and we managed to take the game. So fantastic one. Really, really good fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.